this is a wallet and this is also a wallet and so is this and so is this but no matter what they look like they are some of our most valuable personal items kind of like this thing which can be when you're traveling especially a lifeline to help to communication to funds and even be your way back home now depending on where you are in the world you might not have to think much about getting mugged or pickpocketed but unfortunately in some parts of the world it's all too common but you are not helpless you may have seen this video from south america where an armed robber boards a bus and demands everyone's wallet and phone you can see here the calm, collected, and calculated actions of this woman in the front to protect her valuables with the thief being none the wiser. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter by showing you some of the precautions and preparation this woman took, the trick that she executed, and some mistakes that she made that you should avoid. Using this robbery as an example, there are a few things that we can take away. But first, if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and let's get started. Now, first things first, if someone pulls a gun on you on a robbery, just give up your things because your life shouldn't be a variable in this equation. But your things are your things, those we can work with. When it comes to your valuables, it's a good idea to carry some decoys depending on where you're traveling and the general crime levels. Your wallet is a good place to start. To begin with, don't carry all of your bank and credit cards and cash with you at all times. Oh, and let me jump in here to say wallets, wallets only ever front pocket. Never put your wallet in your back pocket. Your wallet should always be right here, right in your front pocket. And only bring the amount of cash you'll need during your time out. Going out to dinner, Bring the cash that you need for the meal, plus some extra. If you're going out for $5 tacos, you don't need to bring $500 with you. Have, say, $50 with you. Now, instead of one massive bill, break it up into some 10s, 5s, and 1s. You can keep a little in one pocket, some in your sock, and maybe some in your wallet. The idea here is to have your money spread out so that you have something to hand over to a potential crook, but without losing all of your money. All right, so bonus tip. Instead of keeping all of your money in a big wad like this, take a little bit of it, put it in its own little separate fold, take a little bit more, fold that up, take a little bit more, fold that up, and keep them all in their little separate stacks. So instead of one big wad of money, you can see you've got four of these little stacks here. And what that does is it makes it a little bit easier for you to take your money out without pulling out a huge wad of cash, which is going to make you look more like a target. So let's say you need to buy a coffee, you're just going to pull out a little bit of money. Or you're shopping for a gift, like a souvenir, you pull out just a bigger wad of money. And you can see that these are all separate. Also, it means if somebody asks for you for your money and you need to pull something out of your pocket, you can just pull out a little bit of it and have this perhaps remaining behind or you can just keep this in a separate pocket but it's another way to distribute your valuables when you're traveling robbers move quickly and you can see that in the robbery video they want to surprise steal and escape without getting caught a lot of times during a mugging just throwing a money clip or wallet on the ground is enough to quickly end the situation another thing you can add to your decoy wallet are old expired credit cards just to be a little bit more convincing you can even order some decoy cards, but the expired ones work just as well, even if they do reveal your name. Now your ID, you want to keep that separate from your wallet or money clip, kind of like this, so that when you put it in your pocket and you take it out, you can take out your decoy wallet, for example, but your ID won't be attached to it. This way you can slip out your wallet or decoy without having to give up your ID as well. Also, in most foreign countries, a photocopy of your passport or ID card will work just as well as the physical one and leave it less vulnerable to getting lost or stolen. It's important to know the local rules, but where possible, stick to the copy. That's not to say your hotel room is always the safest place, but if it does have a safe, make sure you use it. Oh, and if you have an old phone, make sure you use that too. Older phones you've long since replaced make great decoys, and in some places I would even go so far as to have an old Nokia or burner as my daily driver and leave the more expensive smartphone behind. 
Otherwise, you can carry the older phone as a decoy and even charge it up to make it more convincing and just make sure that it's separated from your actual phone. That might mean in a different pocket of your backpack or purse or all the way back at the hotel. Now, this may seem like a lot of effort or very complicated, but the concept is pretty straightforward. You just want to distribute your valuables as much as you can, keep a couple of decoys in case you have to give something up, and all of these things act as passive security measures against pickpockets and muggers. And when it comes to your decoys, you want to keep those in the more vulnerable places and your actual valuables in more protected pockets and protected spaces. But what if the thief is overt? where it's not a pickpocketing where someone is trying to be stealthy, but it's more of a robbery or more of a mugging where somebody pulls a gun or a knife on you. Well, first of all, disclaimer, if someone does that, just give up your things. Like, don't even think about it. Try to be as absolutely quick as possible and make the situation as short of a period of time as you can. Like I mentioned, thieves want to be as quick as possible. They want to commit the crime and be out of there as fast as possible. So if you're fumbling around for your decoy and you can't figure out which is your fake thing and your real one and all that stuff, that's just going to take more time and put you in a more dangerous situation. And you can take away from this two important lessons. The first is practice and the second is acceptance. Lesson one, practicing how you would handle a particular situation can help you remain calm in a worst case scenario. Know where your decoys are. Is that your right or left pocket? Maybe it's the top fold of your purse. It's a good idea to always keep the placement of those items, once you've decided on them, in the same place each time. If that means decoy in your left pocket and fake phone on the top pocket, whatever it happens to be, just stick with it. That will make you less likely to fumble at the wrong time. Now, if you do get understandably flustered in a situation like that, just give up whatever is in your pockets. You might lose your real phone or your cards or your ID or whatever it happens to be. But like the thief, you want the moment to end as quickly as possible and it's going to be in your best interest. Similarly, if you're asked to empty your pockets or hand over your purse or your entire backpack, just do it. Your things, your stuff is not worth getting hurt or killed over. Now, going back to this video, this lady was very calm and collected, and I'm guessing that's because this isn't the first time she's been in a situation like this. No panic, she was very smooth, clearly she had a decoy and she knew where it was and she was prepared to hand it over, just like that at a moment's notice. But there is also a mistake here that I don't want you to repeat. You can see her take her phone out and place it under her thigh. A few things could have gone wrong here. There may have been an accomplice just at the door see her do this, it's extra movement that's not required, and she doesn't have her eyes on the situation around her. What I would recommend is to simply have the decoy phone handy and in a separate pocket in your purse, rather than taking the real one out and slipping it under your thigh and doing all those extra motions. Now I'm guessing she did that because she was worried that they might just ask her to hand over her entire purse, but still it was a risky move, added some extra movements, and could have gone wrong. The timing in this entire sequence of events is very close. One change, like the guy turning back or standing over her to see the inside of her purse or noticing her moving, and things could have gone very differently. Being calm, collected, and calculated can help you save some of your things if you're traveling and you happen to be in the fortunate situation where you get mugged or pickpocketed, but it's important to remember that no security is foolproof. You can't protect all of your things all the time, but if you do find yourself in a situation where you're mugged or pickpocketed or robbed, but you can leave with your health, then it is a win every single time. Thanks very much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any of your own security traveling tips when it comes to your wallet or your valuables. Let me know about those down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week, and I will see you in the next video.